Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm down here in Sussex at a place called Shoreham. I don't even think I've fished it, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> Shoreham. I'm not sure if I fished at Shoreham. But apparently it's quite good down here. Uh, what I'm going to do is give you a few tips just on real basic stuff, very, very basic stuff on beach fishing. It might just help you pick off the extra fish or two. They have been catching fish here. I've got rag, rag worm, and I'll show you about those. They've been catching basically on black lug, and I haven't got any of those. A bit dumb, isn't it, in my heart? Anyway, it's as windy as, as, as you could want. So I'm behind one of these groins. Now, this is a tip for fishing around groin areas is you want to see which way the tidal flow is going and not just use it as a windbreak. For a windbreak I've actually got one of these beach shelters. That keeps the wind off me. If you get a bit of wind in the uh, in the microphone that, that, that messes the whole system up. But basically in the winter you don't want any wind on you at all because you're going to get wind chill factor and that's going to drop your body temperature. You'll end up shivering, cold, nasty, horrible and it can actually you know, really make you pretty ill if you do get chilled. So try and keep out of the wind if you can or wear the appropriate clothing. Now one of the tips I get asked is casting. I use a fixed ball most of the time. I used to use multipliers and very occasionally I would get a bird's nest, an overrun. Well that's fine but when I'm making a film I've got no time to start picking away and getting this bird's nest out. So I stick to fixed balls not because I don't cast with a multiplier. I can cast with a multiplier but I can't afford to lose any time so I like fixed ball fishing. It's dead easy. Open the bay line, throw it out and there you go, you're fishing. But I'll show you a couple of basic tips that might just help you pick off the odd extra fish. Okay, now listen, when you're beach fishing, you have to use a biggish leg, let's say an average of four to six ounces. And that is to fight the tide, the waves, the surf, and of course, the wind. The idea is to get out there a nice comfortable distance, as far as you can cast comfortably, but you must use a shock leader. So you fill your reel up with whatever line you want, let's say on average about 15 pound line for beach fishing I would think would be good. Got it on a nice big old 30 year old fixed ball reel here that's up to now, never let me down. And then you put your shock leader on top. Now because I'm not going to be bothering with pendulum casts and I can get away with sort of 50 pounds, you don't, you don't really need anything heavier than 50 pounds I don't feel for a regular casting, just a, an overhead uh, thump as we call it. But you need to have a few turns of it around the spool. You can't just have it like this. You know, you can't just put a piece of shock leader on and have it on your main reel, reel line, let's say there, like this, because that is 15 pounds. That's going to break at 15 pounds. The idea is to wind the shock leader around a few turns like this of your spool, okay, so it's got a good tight grip on there. And then you drop down from your rod top, so allow enough to drop from the rod top, let's say four or five feet, because you can always cut it back, and then you tie a little snap link on there, so you can clip your rig, your hooks, to it, and thereafter, at the bottom of it, another clip for your lead. So you use whatever rig you want up there. In my case, I've got, uh, I think, one of Tony's three hook rigs on here, small hooks. But here's a little tip. If guys want to cast, when you get the... You need to get the, the bay line really in a comfortable position. Now here's, here's the grips here. If, you, if you're a beginner, you can see on this particular reel, this is a, an old Shimano, it's got a little notch there that helps you get a good sort of trigger grip, if you like, like that. I was hoping you can see that on the camera. Just there. So you get, you get a really good grip on there. Now, you want, you don't want to open the bay line here because that finger has to then stretch over the top of the bay line here. And that's not good. Sunny disasters is probably going to go wrong there. Might even close prematurely on you, and it could be a very nasty explosion of line and the lead disappearing at high velocity somewhere. Hopefully not to me. So what I suggest is what, two things here. When you do your cast, make sure the knuckle here of the bail arm is like a trigger, just there. Can you see that? So you just get it, pull the trigger, open the bail arm. I'll try and turn it so you can see it there. That's how you want it. So the bail arm is opening away from your finger. And then when you let go and release this, the line can fly off. Now a second tip I find, you can get what they call now wind-on leaders. They're sort of more for multiplier fishing. And it's a, it's a tapered leader that goes absolutely on and has a smaller knot. Because if you have 50 pound line and you join it to 15 pound line, you can have quite a clumpy knot there and you do not want it snagging on the way through the rings or even on reel. And the same really does apply to Yes, the fixed ball will. So you, if you have, just by pure chance, the leader knot here, 
There's a variety of leader knots. I use an Albright special knot there, which is uh, designed by Jimmy Albright, a top Florida Keys guy, for joining joining lines of different diameter. You can actually see it here or there. Let's put it there on our how to tie knots. One of our links to how to tie knots. It's got the Albright special on there. It's dead handy. I use it all the time. So instead of having this spool with a knot at the top, right at the top here, as you cast, I find sometimes, very, very occasionally, it will snag on the top. So what I do, just to have it, I wind it, but manually, around the base of the spool, so that the knot to the shop leader is right at the bottom, and then I just do two or three turns like this, not overlapping, just parallel turns, just to about there. Hopefully you can see that, just about there about four or five turns, then I lock it and hold it with a bail arm, and then I get the drop that I want, the length of drop, which might be, uh, I've got about six foot here to power up the rod and make it flex. And then I'm bringing round my knuckle, my bail arm here, to that trigger position here, you can see that. And then I'm ready to cast, and away I go. So just remember that, is use a shock leader, but you can just manually wind that that leader knot, where the two lines of different diameters are joining, at the bottom of the spool there, just manually, and I think you might have a few more trouble-free casts, and hopefully no crack-offs. Good, totally awesome tip. Now some of you out there would be familiar with what's called the panel rig, which is basically, I'll show you again for beginners, on your trace, your snood, your link, whatever you want to call it from here, in your main rig body, you have a fixed hook here, but you have one that's loose, sliding up and down here, and what you can do is you can pinch it with a piece of valve rubber over the top to lock it or you can just do what most of us do and that's a couple of wraps just around the shank two or three wraps locks it in position now what that does if you have a big bait it streamlines it and because it's windy today i've got to give it a fair old heave hoe to get it out there it stops that bait busting up in the wind but it's double edged because if you have a bait let's get one of these worms like this i just made him up for you you thread him around the shank it, it does two things this is a ragworm I thread him right up the centre of the shank, pop him over the eye of the hook, and I straighten him out, right like that. So there you go, there's your hook. But what happens is that will all pull down in one gobby mess after about 10 minutes or a big cast. So you use your panel hook up here to keep it nice and straight by wrapping around the shank like that and just popping it through the top of the bait. So that keeps that worm from condensing and bulging onto the bend of the hook on the bottom hook. But it's also twofold because it can actually act as a hooking hook, if that makes sense. Not just to hold the bait out, so you've got a hook here and a hook there. A big fish will take the whole lot. A smaller fish, if it chews the bait in half, has a bit of bait on this hook and a bit of bait on that. So if you do, well, not necessarily if you have very snaggy ground, but you, you, know, you want to try using panel hooks, and you can use them right down to really small ones and still have a good chance of getting some. Well, do you know what? I've even had two fish on with white. I've had one on the top and one on the bottom. So, who knows, let's get it out there and see if it catches anything. When you've cast out, make sure you leave the bail arm open on your reel as you walk back to your rod rest. Otherwise, you're going to pull the lead out of position and drag it back closer to shore. Take a few turns on it to tighten up to the rod top, put the rod butt in the cup Put the base of the rest, the bottom half of the rod, into the little cup holder there. If you've got it, you can see the little V. But put the line around the outside of the rest. Don't put it inside there because it could pinch. That could give you a sort of false registration. You know, you might have a small fish pulling away there and it might actually pinch. And undo the clutch on the reel just so you can just pull the line off on the pure chance you might get a big fish. Grab a small hook and it could tear the rod right clean out of the rest. Be careful, keep those drags light. Well, there we go, guys. Shows you that, uh, that two hook panel rig works. There he is. I know you can see that. Come around in the light, not the greatest light today. There's a nice little bream there. Now he's taken the bottom hook but up here is the top hook of my panel. I'll unwrap it, you can see it, because I've got to pull the bait off. You can just see it there. So although that was one bait to start off, they chewed away and chewed away and chewed away. 
and eventually he got it down small enough they could take it so they could either take that bait or that bait so I sort of got two shots at it so that's where the two hook panel rig does come into its own it's really intentional for a big fish a really a cod or a bass is, you know would be nice but there you go little black bream a bit tired he's probably been out there a while but I've been filming a nice fit on him not big but let's face it people beggars can't be choosers when the fishing's tough let's get him back And remember that distance isn't everything. I'm just using a light spinning rod here, just a storm spinning rod, regular fixed spool reel, small one, 15 pound line, and I'm throwing it out with small hooks on. Probably 50, 60 yards. All you need to go is sometimes to catch fish. Of course, I've got my big rods that I can throw big leads out with, but don't be afraid to keep a short rod thrown in close, just behind the waves with small baits. People, look at this one then. That's something different. This is a PB for me. I caught them abroad. I have never caught a red mullet, I don't think, in British waters. And there he is. Look at that one. Beautiful colours in. I mean, absolutely unbelievable colours in that. A red mullet off the beach on small hooks that I threw out there with little tiny pieces of ragworm. And do you know what sort of bite it was? because I don't. I was filming, I never even saw it. Who cares? If you can wind a fishing like that. Now for those of you who squeamish and wonder what bait we use, I know some foreign guys say, gee man, what are those things with the fangs? Well the things with the fangs are one of our popular British baits called ragworm. Our ragworm, these ones are kept in grit, some are kept in, uh, in, in different bits and pieces, you know, to keep them alive, but they do have, I may or may not be able to show you a pair of pinchers on the end there. You probably won't be able to see them come out if I hold him. Just in here, they have some really big pinches. So youngsters and kids out there, if you're worried about the pinches on the ragworm, the best way to do it is grip them at the fat end, which is where the pinches come out from. I'll show you if I can get this one dried off. Okay. They've got a tail. Let me show you another one. That probably snapped his tail off. He's got a tail at one end. And there's the little sort of tentacles, and that's where the pinchers come out from. You can see that. So the best thing to do is hold them just behind the head, and you give them a squeeze, it opens that mouth up into the tentacles, and you put the hook right down the tentacles, throat, and the pinchers, and slide it up like this. Put my fingers behind the head, pop it over the eye of the hook. And generally at this stage, they are pinching and nothing. There you go, I'm actually going to put two on here because there might be an outside chance for coddling. So you do the same with the second one if you want to use two. You're feeling particularly extravagant. Now, a tip you can do, if you're not bothered about the pinches, and I'm not bothered about them, they're not going to really hurt you, just nip you. If you don't want to go through there, just go in about an inch, not even that, about a half inch behind the pinches. Roll them around here, round up the shank, and bring the hook out, leaving a little bit of the back to wiggle and a little bit of the front to wiggle. That makes a big bait, so you've added, added a bit of movement there as well. And if the worm's alive, they will give you a bit of wriggle. But if you don't want to get pinched, straight down the mouth of the hook, job done. There must be something out there's going to eat that, surely. Please, if not, I will. 
there you go guys there's the fangs on the end of these you can just see there that they come out and grab their prey with those two fangs now I was told as a kid that if you got a big king ragworm with huge fangs they can actually go through your thumbnail I now realize it was older anglers winding me up but you can see those fangs there now there is a way to cure getting pinched by these they don't they just nip they don't hurt but that's how they feed let me show you put the hook straight down there Use any breakwaters like these groins to your advantage. You can tuck down behind them, but make sure that you're going on the down tide side, because whichever way that tide flows, it's gonna flow back the other way, and that could drag all your leads into the groins or the breakwater, in which case you need to cross over to the other side of the breakwater, or maybe even fish from the middle of the beach. Personally, I like to fish close to the groins. Now here's a tip, make sure that beach tripod is pushed right down, get the legs into the shingle and cover them up with shingle to give them a bit of stability. Push the back leg in as well because if you get a, a really big bass or a big ray or cong or anything big, a big cod and he even picks up a small bait, he's going to be away with it and he'll topple it off the rest. Now another thing, if you get weed in the lines, you can adjust some of these rod rests. You can actually undo them and slide them further up I've already done it with this, I'm just doing this to show you that it can go further up and put those rod tips nice and high and keep them hopefully out of the weed that might be in the wave line. That stops you getting false bites because eventually the weed will build up, build up on that line and it will all wash in and you're getting a terrible mess. And of course, a terrible mess equals, that's right, no fish. clip baits down and get a little bit extra distance out of them, power them out with an overhead thumb, 80, 100 yards would be all I say is about what you need as an average on most UK beaches. Of course, if you're fishing over snags then you've got to get out further, you're going to need the extra distance. But down here, Shoreham, lovely shingle beaches, I didn't lose any gear at all there, I didn't get snagged in the breakers, great place to try fishing and they do get quite a regular amount of fish there just like a small black bream here who's taken a hook way way too big for it but listen am i complaining no i'll catch any fish going and all these little black bream along the south coast this year they've been quite prolific um you know, worm baits squid baits hooks in the fingers yes ouch graham watch that one that's the trouble with panel rigs. You're gonna get two hooks, just watch when you unhook big fish. If they're thrashing around, you might get that second hook in your finger. And like a lot of my sea fish, no point in keeping them, throw them back in the sea. You can always catch them another time. this one people oh, I'm so excited red mullet black bream and the ultimate prize a bass yes just the smallest bass in Shoreham it has to be I've never in my life caught a perfectly conditioned little bass in fact I've never even caught one out of condition this small it is Weensy Burger just look at that isn't that neat beautiful little fish still alive oh, I'm gonna get him off very still got spikes though trust me I'm going to hold him out and I'm going to claim him like they do in the pictures in the press. You see, and they stick him out like they go, there you go. <laughs> a, I just caught me an 814 pound bass. Of course, I don't have a tape measure like they do in other places. You have to measure everything, don't they? Ha, ha, ha. Don't need to measure this one, look. It's barely as big as my nose. Another fish show. Back it goes. There's a few tips there for you. Hopefully you can get down and look. Don't sit in the armchair thinking about it. Get on the beach and give it a go even for a few hours. You never know when they're on the bite, like this guy. I like it like that, actually. Oh yeah, that's the one. That's a picture for me. Mm -hmm. 